Hi, today I thought I'd just share with you a little bit about that lately I've been gravitating towards masculine, like classic masculine fragrances or, you know, fragrances marketed towards men or may, they might be unisex, but they're obviously um, more of, uh, at least traditionally, mas they have more traditionally masculine notes. And I'm just kind of, because I really don't want to miss out. I think I've lately, you know, tried some really good ones and that's made me a little more curious and the ones of you who follow my channel know that I've, you know, recently picked up a few vetiver fragrances, have been enjoying them a lot. Uh, vetiver from Nikolai and Escal on Haiti. Haiti. Uh, in Swedish it's called Haiti. Uh, Haiti uh, sounds like, it sounds weird to me in English. Haiti, like it's something you hate. <laughs> but those are really nice vetiver fragrances and I really don't want to miss out on like a whole section of perfumery just because someone at some point thought that this is like more of a masculine thing like why would lavender be masculine why would herbs be masculine so I'm I'm kind of like I don't wear them every day but more and more often I would say and um, and lately okay I'll just show what kind of started it off oh, I mean the vetiver thing came kind of by itself and then I've been watching Ramsey's channel a lot and he's very much into like old classical perfumes marketed towards men, like de old designers, like vintage perfumes. And um, even even the niche that he talks about, like our amouage marketed towards men very often. I mean, he doesn't either draw a clear line. He's got a lot of feminine fragrances, but I'm, I want to discover, I want to explore all over, all over, you know, the, what perfumery has to offer. And it kind of started off with me getting a hold of this little bottle of Bellamy from Hermes. If I put it there in front of my face, you can kind of see the lettering there. This is an eight milliliter uh, bottle for, from when I think this is like, this is really old and it's in perfect condition. And I uh, wore it, I've worn it twice, like all, I'm giving it full wearing twice. And like the last time I wore it, uh, I got co several compliments and I was really also enjoying it myself. So it was like a really good fragrance day. I like that because I was a little bit worried. I don't really want to come across as like smelling like a man, but the, these people, because I said it was men's fragrance, they're like that, you know, they couldn't tell. And I don't find this to be so masculine. It's like a, it is like a Shepra fragrance, Shepra structure. You know, it has a little bit of fruitiness in the top. It has some florals in the mid, and then it's got like oak moss and probably some animalic tones underneath too, and leather, because leather is also kind of an animalic note. It's a leather fragrance, like a, a sheep or leather, maybe you would call it. I mean, it's just incredible. I've used it twice. You can hardly see that I've touched it. So like a little seems to go a long way. And the first time I used it, I felt I felt like I only got like two, three hours. But the other day, like in more cloudy, a little bit colder weather, we're having kind of not a cold spell, but yeah, for, for Swedish summer, it's pretty cold. It's like around 18, 20 degrees now. This is perfect. It lasted like a good six, seven hours at least. Then it was kind of starting to fade. But I was getting little, you know, I was getting little puffs of it. I was enjoying it. So that I, I really, really, um, I'm cherishing this little mini. And then, okay, what else have I tried? Uh, I was kind of also, you know, clearing out some stuff. Uh, I had two fragrances from the house of Acro. And Acro is a brand that was founded by... Olivia Cresp. I got to just think for a minute. Who was it now again? Like master perfumer, Olivia Cresp. And he, I just, I think I realized this house is not for me. And I think I passed on, I, I just sent this box to Julia. You know, the person who sent me all these um, vintage fragrances, she's now getting some more like more modern stuff. And I put one of these darks, I, I put dark in there from Acro. I decided I was kind of ready with this. I like the way it smells, but it's very much uh, kind of a dark chocolate coffee, basey fragrance. And I don't feel like this is something, this is not how I, it smells good, but it's all kind of, it's kind of an earthy, it's not like a chocolate gourmand sweet fragrance. It's more of a, of a non-sweet, maybe bittersweet kind of fragrance with these type of notes. And I just realized I'm not going to wear this. This is not like, this is not the way I want to come across. So I decided to like, let someone else try it. But I did decide to keep and give another chance to another fragrance from this house. Um, and it's called Ink. Ink. And it has the note of ink, which I'm actually, it's supposed to kind of smell like a tattoo parlor, I guess. And I don't have tattoos and I don't know what that smells like. But this fragrance 
it's kind of a leathery, oody, um, I'm not quite sure of the notes in here actually, it's woody, it's kind of a challenge for me, but I, I find it, I think it might have a little bit of incense as well. I decided to at least hold on to that for a little while longer, and then I might pass that on as well. I will definitely not be buying a full bottle of this. And I've also smelled others from this house. I think there's one called Smoke, and there's one called, um, I think he's got a new, like a citrusy gourmand fragrance out that might be called something like Lemon Cake or something like that. Can't remember the exact name. But I, that, there's been a little bit of hype around that, so it might be different. Maybe he's kind of branching out and from this from this kind of all base notes kind of experience, or this is my experience. I, I find that they're not really up my alley, but I think they're a little bit maybe more on the masculine side, perhaps. So that could be the reason I'm not, you know, going for it completely. Then this is this happens to me sometimes when someone writes to me and and wants to you know buy a decant for me from some fragrance then i'm like that i haven't worn in a long time then i start to rediscover the beauty of it and i was about to let this bottle go decided to keep it because i realized i really love it actually or i really like it at least and it is also a quite masculine fragrance this is the was, was the result of a swap uh this is called um terrific oud extreme I know it only says Terrific Oud there, but it is the, the extreme version. The, the, the Terrific Oud, and it's from Terry de Gunsberg. Uh, the other bottle is looks a little bit different. It's a little bit more plain, so this is like the, the intense extreme version. And it is, uh, I know, I, I, sometimes I thought this the Oud maybe smells a little bit synthetic, like it's not completely like natural smelling, but it's so, I love it. I it has only like four notes listed. I think it's like saffron, leather, oud, and rose. And I, th I find the rose quite toned down. It's not a rose fragrance. It, definitely masculine leaning fragrance. Um, my son has a decant of this. I like it on him, but I also like it on myself. I mean, this is pretty. So I sold her a 10 mil decant and I was thinking about letting the bottle go. I have like this much left and I I don't really like a hundred, you know, like these big blocks in my collection with hundred mil bottles, but this one I will actually be keeping. I find it to be really, really nice. And I've seen that like it's out of stock all over. I don't know if it's discontinued or if it's temporarily out of stock. Uh, and the price is outrageous. It's like $400 plus. And then I thought, no, I'll just, you know, I'll think about it for a while because I can't repurchase it. Um, you can, before you used to be able to get kind of good deals on these, you could get like this one and a travel size 10 mil for a, like a package deal, like in like a gift box, but haven't seen that in a while on this. Have you tried this fragrance, Terrific Oud Extreme? And if you have, what do you think? It's, it's, um, it's, it's kind of an easy wear. I think it's just, uh, I think the person who, the person who bought this from me, uh, has, has previously gone through, I think a five milliliter decant from me before. And she was asked, she asked me if I could let go of some more and she called it dreamy. She says it's so dreamy and I, I can kind of get that. I think she kind of, she made me rediscover it in my collection. That's what happened. Then I, what else have I been up to here? I have experienced one more pine ward fragrance or actually several because my friend was here the other day and she brought a whole bunch of pine ward or like four or five that she has and one that she only had a sample of that I really though was the one that maybe I liked the most and then now there's nothing left because I wore the last of it yesterday it's called I can't even see it but it's called ice fall and I think they've done a really good job creating kind of a cold feeling and I'm going to tell you the notes of this. I think this was really interesting because this one got me like online and I was researching, you know, what they were trying to, to, um, to trying to create here. And I'm going to read you the blur because I think it sounds really inviting. And I think that they've done a good job. Um, crisp needles, deep blue ice and dark water, a frozen glacial estuary where ice falls crashing into waves. And I had to look up estuary. I didn't know what it was. And then that kind of got me Googling more and more different concepts. So estuary is kind of where sweet water, for example, from a river meets salty water, like the ocean. Um, and I guess that's, you get water kind of like, you get special ecosystems there, right there. And the water can sometimes be described as brackish, like it's not sweet and it's not salty. Um, so I think even though it's a, Ice, kind of ice fall refers to winter. I think that this would be perfect. 
there was really not enough in here for me to give it a full wearing. <clears throat> it was just like a, a tiny drop at the bottom. Um, and I had it right here yesterday. And I just kind of at least got the feel for it. And I'd love some more juice of this. <clears throat> I would wear this in the summer because it gave it like a real cooling effect. And the notes are juniper, nootka, which I had never seen before, but I looked it up. It's, it's a special cypress, uh, new, um, Alaska cypress. So it's, I guess it's in the cypress family. But it had it's it's described as having a woody aromatic smell with hints of grapefruit. So that gives you an idea. It also has the note of white grapefruit, seaweed, cypress, pine, cedar, and sandalwood. But it has like that real kind of minty, almost like cold menthol kind of feeling on the top. And I think the white grapefruit is, comes to, I mean, I don't usually like grapefruit so much in fragrance because it has that little bit bitterness, but this doesn't have that. I think this is, I think this is an interesting house. However, the other ones that she brought, I felt like this is an interesting experience, but I found that they were kind of non-perfumey. There was one, I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's their best seller. Maybe I'll put in the, I'll find out which one it was and I'll put it in the comments if I remember. Mm, that really much smells like the forest in a very natural kind of way. So if you guys are into that kind of thing, I think you should look into Pine Ward. And they're not like hysterically expensive. I think they sell them in 30 mils for like maybe close to $100 or a little bit over maybe. Um, so not too bad, not too bad if you're into this kind of thing. More very naturalistic kind of fragrances. Uh, let's see what else I put down here. Yeah, only five people have rated this fragrance on Fragrantica, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of like the, the narrow kind of scope of this house. I don't think they do a lot of like traditional marketing. It's this guy, he's in his 20s, he grew up in the Rocky Mountains, he's kind of doing his thing, and I don't think this guy is driven by money so much, but um, I find it, I find his stuff interesting, and I think that maybe, maybe I would, you know, like to buy a bottle, and also kind of like, contribute a little bit to someone like this who's following his passion and doing something of his own. Anyway, let's see more what I've been doing that's kind of more masculine leaning. Oh, yesterday I went on, on a date with someone and his idea was to go perfume sniffing. So we went perfume sniffing and then we went to lunch and we ended up at MK, like our biggest department store, and they were having kind of a sale there. I mean, first I took him all over the place and he got to smell everything like Tom Ford and Amouage and I kind of tried to pick out like simple things that are easy to like, like Leighton and Muscravageur and uh, what else? Um, Creed Aventus, of course, he got to smell like just to give him a good idea about, you know, first step into niche perhaps. And then they were having a sale up in the kind of the men's department and it was this house, I think they're getting rid of this house because I think it's just, they're not selling, I'm just guessing that, but I don't know. They had these little travel size, now where did I put that little box? Yeah, it looks like this. It's a, it's a company, it's called Ivra, Y-V-R-A, and these are the initials of the perfumer. It's a Dutch guy and his name is Evo van Regteren Altina. Yeah, that, very, very Dutch. Every, anything with like van is always like Dutch, right? He's like a journalist. He was a journalist within like perfumery, expensive watches, handmade shoes, a lot of like lifestyle, luxury products. And he just kind of got, he got into perfumery that way. And I think the, he, the only perfumes that he's actually created are this in his own, from his own brand. And they were just having a sale. They had these little travel cases where you got like one, eight, two, you got two eight milliliter of the same fragrance. And you could kind of like, you know, this little travel case, you could take it out and replace the little vial that goes in it. So my date actually bought two fragrances and I bought the, a third fragrance and then we swapped one. So now I have two new fragrances from this house and they're all called different years. So this I have 1991 and 1979 and I've only given one of them a full wearing. And this is an aromatic fragrance, it's called 1991 and it refers to the year uh, of internet. And it's kind of supposed to be kind of an antidote, like, you know, get offline, get on with your life, don't spend your life, you know, your life scrolling on social media, whatever. That kind of thing, I think, was kind of the inspiration. I find this to be, it's mostly that I'm kind of like into this masculine stuff now, and I just kind of want it. It was a good price, 40% off. And this, this is not a real pricey house anyway, so what I paid for these two 
were like 20, $30 roughly for these two. So I got like 16 milliliters of perfume and I tried two new fragrances, which I thought was a really good deal. And okay, so this is an herbal, it has an herbal top like pedigrain, bergamot, rosemary, and lemon. So citrus and herbs. And in the mid, lavender, masculine leaning note, geranium, also masculine, cardamom and cypress. Cypress I also find more in masculine fragrances. Uh, oak moss in the base, vetiver, amber, cedar, and sandalwood. So it's basically, it's your typical aromatic kind of fragrance. And I've worn this all day today up until just now recently. So I've, I've had it on for like a good six hours and it does fade, I'll have to say. I, I wonder if these are EDTs, let's see. Um, let's see if I can find it somewhere. I think it's an eau de, to eau de toilette. I think I saw this somewhere, maybe here. Actually, it doesn't even say, or maybe I missed it. It's an, okay, they're not only called um, the year, they're also called, this one's called 1991 Lessons de Explorance. And I think this is French, I'm think, or maybe it's called the same in Dutch, like that, you know, they would have the same kind of structure in their language. I don't know Dutch at all, don't recognize it. Or maybe he's just kind of made it look, you know, had given them French names. The essence of exploring, I guess. I don't find this fragrance to be super unique. However, I like it, and I thought this was a good chance to kind of explore like a classic aromatic men's fragrance with citrus and herbs and oak moss and lavender and geranium, all these like classic fragrances. I really, I kind of caught myself a few times during the morning and like, oh, I'm smelling masculine like that, but enjoy, I've enjoyed it. So that was that one. And then I also got 1979 and I don't know the story behind this year, but I know he had, his first one was called 1958 and that's the year of his birth. And then he also has uh, 1965, which is a patchouli kind of heavier, Middle Eastern style fragrance, um, and then he has oh God, 2004. Maybe I can't. No, I can't remember the last one. But I think there are five fragrances in all, so they might be interesting to try. I think when the price was right, it was a, it was a good thing to try at least. So I'll get back to you on these and see how I'm doing with them. One wearing is not enough to get an idea about if this is something that should be in my collection or not really. And I'm still working my way through. A, I would like to mention. A few fragrances that I've kind of like worn again and I have kind of a new um, idea about them or actually quite a few wait am I gonna reach for these sorry guys um, one is a Bertrand de Chafour fragrance called Treyi with two E's at the end I guess this is a lucky scent sample I, someone gave it to me but this house Nila Vermeer creations is I really, really recommend this house. I love Ashoka, which I have. I, I, I have a decant of it. I, my, this is my second decant, and it's really pricey, this house, but such good fragrances. And this fragrance, I wasn't so sure about this the first time I wore it, like if this would be for me, but I have written like beautiful on it. And then when I wore it again, I was like, I put it on, forgot what I put it on. I'm like, oh my God, what is that? Like catching myself thinking just, just noticing its incredible beauty and um, it smells it's almost like it's a little bit like fruity almost like like a candy kind of sweetness but it doesn't go super super sweet I have to find my notes here for you because I, I thought it was interesting what someone had said about this fragrance because I don't get the same I, I read a blurb or something someone wrote this an Indian person wrote this the most authentic representation of my dear motherland and this person from India and I don't know it, it okay, so had ginger cinnamon LME black currant and basil in the top in the mid cardamom sandalwood saffron clove and jasmine and uh, in the base incense myrrh oud vanilla amber cedar vetiver patchouli and oak moss like it has a lot there's a lot going on in this one it's described as amber spicy and someone had said it was almost foodish, but I don't think it's foodish. It's for me, it's it's not a classic gourmand, but God, this is so hard to describe this fragrance. And I so much wish I had more than this. These are stupid little samples. They're way too small. I mean, it depends on what fragrance it is, of course, but in this case, it's too small. There's no way you can get a good idea. I'd like to wear this a few more times, but it is, even if you don't like it in the long run, I think that many of you, if you tried this, you'd be like, wow, 
like trying it on like wow this is something else this is something good um the average rating on for grand is 4.16 i don't know it's just there's it's so many things going on i'd just like to spend more time with this fragrance treye t-r-a-y-e-e -E. incredible fragrance i still don't know if i buy a full bottle it came out in 2012 so it's not like a really recent fragrance I think it's still around. I think it's one of their best sellers, though. But I, I could be wrong. Um, Ashoka is also incredible. It's more like of a sandalwood fig type fragrance, but it also has a lot of other things going on in there. Okay, then I've actually spent some more time with Harvest Mouse. Um, I had an opinion that this was just a plain old vanilla, boring. I didn't want anything, but I, I swapped a little amount with somebody just to, because I heard Ramsey say that it, it, it reminded him of Oud from MFK which it doesn't very much at all. I mean, there's a saffron note in both, but that's about it. Then there, after that, there are no more similarities according to my nose. But I have really been enjoying this fragrance. And I'm not a real vanilla, like a clean vanilla type of girl. My vanillas, I want my vanillas more interesting, like material from Amouage perhaps, or this is more straight up vanilla. It's, um, but there are it, there's something here that makes it really soft and wearable and it's an easy reach, I guess. You know, I, I really, I'm really enjoying this little squirt uh, harvest mouse from Zoologist. Then I'm trying right now as we speak, I have given Le, ba Le Baiser du Dragon from Cartier another chance, like third, fourth wearing. I've discussed it with a friend. We've sniffed it together. I still can't, can't get a hold of this fragrance quite. And like, I want to analyze it. I want to put it into some kind of a category. I want to put a label on it, and I can't. It's like it, it both has like gourmand, gourmandy, nutty kind of notes. It has patchouli. It has a little vetiver. It has a little bit of a. It's so hard to describe this fragrance, and I it, every time I've worn it, I kind of get a different feeling. Is it masculine? Is it feminine? I don't know. But I like it. But I don't. I don't think I'd like go out and hunt down a bottle because it's just hard to come by. But if a bottle would fall in my lap, like someone would give me a bottle, or I would see it, like really, for an affordable price online somewhere, like a used bottle, I would probably get it because I really think that this is interesting, wearable. It's easy to wear, but sometimes I can't get a hold of it too. Like my nose, will kind of hunt for it. Where is it? Where is it? Like it's not a real loud fragrance. It's kind of. Maybe I just need to spray more. I'm pretty sure this is the EDP and not the, the pure parfum version, but my little decan didn't say, and it was kind of like it's been passed on between a few different hands, so I'm not sure of like whose bottle it was. I mean, the patchouli is pretty strong on first. And this thing with amaretto, like a, it has some kind of an almond liqueur. I'm not sure I would have been able to say that. It's not super boozy to me, but I really like this fragrance. I, I do. It's a, it's a really good fragrance. It's a good fragrance, but I don't know if I'd buy a full bottle of it. Um, but I do want to have, I wish I had a little bit more of it. That I really do. And then I have three fragrances that I've kind of worn, or that I think are worth wearing again from Born to Stand Out, the Korean brand. Excuse me here. I'm trying to, it's hard for me to find a room in my house where I can be undisturbed. That's why I'm kind of like, I'm always in a different environment. So it, it, there are these three. Uh, they're called... Mud, fig porn, and dirty rice. And mud is kind of a good vanilla. And I think it reminds some people of Odwell from Diptyque. I think this was a Natalie Lorson creation, if I remember correctly. It's not like super interesting, but it's nice. And I think I'm going to give this a few more wears because I enjoyed wearing it. And dirty rice was one of those things. I had that same experience. I put it on. I forgot what I put on. I'm like, oh, what was that? This was beautiful. And then I realized it was dirty rice. And the name is really misleading. I don't really get the rice. I don't get any dirt at all, but it's a really nice kind of sandalwoody, Lost Alice type of fragrance, or like Meander from Amouage a little bit. Um, this one may be a little bit more floral, a little bit more easy wear, not as gourmandy, perhaps as like Lost Alice, I find to be a little bit more like sweetened and milky. I don't know. This one, I, I just find it. Let's see if I took some new notes on this one. Maybe I didn't. I don't think I did. 
I, I didn't, but I, I went back and looked at my notes and I think I just thought it was too similar to like maybe Santal Austral and um, what was this other one I, I mentioned? Um, Lost Alice. It's funny, this one reminds of Lost Alice and I thought that Angelique from Papillon reminds of Lost Alice, but this one doesn't remind me of Angelique. <laughs> so that's, but there's a, I guess it would be a bridge between them. This one would be a bridge between them. I, I, I mean, I think, I think this, this house is overpriced. I think it's, they're 50 mil for like 200 something plus dollars. It's kind of cute. You know, they're like little and they're kind of like, there's a lot of marketing, I think. Um, and all the, the, the fragrances have these kind of names, fig porn and the sex, this and booze, that, and it, some of their like marketing material I saw, you know, let's get drunk and do things you do when you're drunk. And it's kind of like a little bit juvenile, I think this, this kind of marketing, but I, I mean, I guess it, it's, it catches the eye, you know, it makes people interested perhaps. And I think they're all kind of, they're kind of easy wares except the cherry one, which is absolutely horrible. It's called, I think it's called Indecent Cherry, but then I'm not a cherry fan. And there's what else? Um, there was one, it, ha it has like a saffron oud rose. I don't know if it has saffron, but it's an oud rose uh, fragrance. It's called Not Safe for Work, NSFW, that I haven't even been able to try because I'm so sick of that combo. So, um, what else? oh yeah, oh, and then I wanted to say one more thing. And that is that I just recently have watched both Rich Mitch uh, the duck and Ramsey talk about the special house called Gross Smith. It's a British house. They've done a revival, like the, the great grandchild of the founder has done like a revival of this, this old British house that like had to close because of the war or something like that. I don't know if that's a true story, if it's just kind of a marketing thing, like a uh, Creedish kind of thing to do. I'm not sure, but they've made, you know, like fragrances for royalty and their latest release is called King's Salute and it's uh, kind of was made for the coronation of King Charles and um, of the United Kingdom and I don't know if there's any collab there or if he's even in on it or if they just do this as a thing but I that was the only fragrance that I smelled when I visited this shop fragrance and art when I was there in June and I, I just thought I remember this fragrance it's like a lavender kind of fougere I think um, something like that and it, I thought it was great and I just thought wow this is what a man should smell like I really really loved it and now I felt like I boy I should have spent more time with this house because both Rich Mitch and Ramsey are like raving about this house and I had the chance to go through basically the whole house and I didn't take it because I was busy with Papillon I was busy with other with other things so I guess I just have to go back there or order samples or something if I want to you know explore this house I find, uh, I don't know much about British perfumery, most British perfumery that I've smelled, you know, Jo Malone, Floris, Creed, um, or I don't know if you consider Creed French or, or British, but it's usually, usually the fragrances, I find them a little toned down and a little polite. Uh, I guess it just hasn't been, I haven't gotten there yet, but this Grossmith sounds like something up my alley and many of the fragrances from this house are lean feminine. If I understood Rich Mitch correctly, he tried seven fragrances from the house. He said he probably wouldn't wear or buy any of them, but he uh, appreciates them and he could really see the beauty. And I remember him saying that Saffron Rose, although he was like, oh God, he had super low expectations and they, he said it was his favorite of, from the bunch. So um, go and catch those videos. I think you can just Google, you know, Rich Mitch Grossmith uh, and uh, Ramsey Grossmith and you'll find these videos. I find their videos very entertaining. Rich Mitch is very, very slow and does typical like first impressions and he takes his time and I find it very calming, sometimes frustrating though about how slow it is, but it's kind of refreshing that someone does their own thing and everyone doesn't do it the same. Uh, I, I do my thing, he does his thing, you know, everyone's free to watch what they want to watch, but like he's, he just seems, I really, what I appreciate about, what I appreciate about Rich Mitch is that he's, unbribable you know you can really tell if he doesn't like something he's gonna say it he there's no there's nothing involved like being friends with someone or you know knowing the brand or getting free bottles or anything and of course it's a small channel I think his channel might even be smaller than mine or about the same size and um, but I like I like his we have the exact same opinion about 
YouTube in perfumery in general and influencers and you know that uh, them trying to get us to spend money that they themselves would not spend on perfume and um, to take this into consideration you know while making perfume choices I, I think he he puts it into you know words in a really good way I think you should go and subscribe to his channel I, I really enjoy his stuff I wish I could see his face though I, I, I only he only puts strips and you can see bottles so there's really it's mostly about listening to him. You listen to him. You don't really see him. So, but he's, I don't know, he's, this is the way he wants to do videos. It's up to him, right? Anyway, those were my thoughts on some, some fragrances I've been wearing lately. I would love to hear if you have opinions about these fragrances. Do you wear Bellamy? Are you a woman uh, that wears masculine fragrances? If so, which ones do you recommend? Do you like any of the fragrances that I've mentioned here today? Um, what do you think of Le Bézier du Dragon? I, I'm still, I really want to discuss this fragrance more. <laughs> anyway, well, that was all for today, guys. Bye.